Okay, so the question that's being asked is, how do you find the sample size, uh, the, the minimum sample size, um, so you're within a certain margin of error, and this deals with confidence intervals. So this is from, this is from the, I'm gonna do this problem, do an audio walkthrough of this, of this, uh, of this problem here, and it's just like the one in my open math, or I mean on, uh, on WebAssign. So let's see, let me get a, let me get, uh, let me get a writing tool going here. Um, so I see, I see, what do they have? So I've got a, they want a sample size. How big a sample do I need to be 90% confident that the sample mean of this, the mean number of hours of sleep for college students is within 0 .0 0.2 hours. So that 0 0.2 hours is my margin of error. So if I knew, if I knew, um, well, from the problem, we have what? We have, let's see, we have, we have, uh, I noticed that it, so I'm gonna do a condition check just to make sure I'm, I'm in the right idea. And usually we are with these sample size ones. We, we use the population standard deviation. They'll usually give us, if we, if we don't have that, then and in practice what they do is they'll run a, run a little mini sample to get an idea of what the standard deviation is. And then they'll use that as an estimate. Um, not perfect, but, if you don't know what a standard the standard deviation is, you need, you need something someplace to start. So that's the population standard deviation. I'm going to use that little delta symbol rather than s. S is for the sample. That's the statistic, and this is a parameter, right? Um, so what we do is, if we're doing a confidence interval with this, we take our sample mean plus or minus some z score for some level of confidence times the standard deviation from the sample. I mean, from the population divided by the square root of n. And what this problem is saying, they told us what this is equals. They said, we wanna be within 0.2 hours. So, but what they're, what they're asking us is we don't know, we don't know how big a sample, so we need to find to, to get the, within that margin of error. So what will it be? Um, so what we do is if we, if we think about this equation, and, and Dr. Stevens walks you through where this comes from, but I'll do this right now. now if we want to be 90% confident, if we come back here and look at that little mini table that Dr. Stevens gives us, we see that for a 90% level of confidence, we want to use 1.645 standard deviations. So the Z score is 1.645. So I'll write here, I'll write right here, 1.645 times the population standard deviation, which was, what was it for this problem? Um, let's see, estimated population mean. We come down to it. I would just pull this out to a couple of different pages so I'd have to keep flipping back. Well, there's the formula, whoops. There's the formula in the book for this on page 109. Okay, well, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do right now is walk you through how, how this formula come about. Do a little algebra and that maybe that'll help you. So let me come down to the problem set, and here we go. That's what I want to do. So they're telling me the standard deviation is 1.25. So 1.25 divided by the square root of n. So now the algebra we're going to do is we're going to divide by this by the z-score. Going to undo the multiplication division. 1.645, and let's see. I'll do this calculator the calculator. So let's see, 0 0.2 divided by 1.645. So I'm getting 0 0.12158. Uh, I'm only gonna write down that many decimal places. In practice, I'll leave that on my calculator. That's equal to 1.25 over the square root of n. And then what you think about, oh, this is really just a proportion. Let's do the cross products. So um, we're gonna write this so we can see it. 1.2, let's see, 0.12158 times the square root of n equals 1.25, 1.25. I'll divide by that 0.12158 number. This is just so I can solve for n. 0 0.12158. That leaves me the square root of n equals, let's see, so I'm gonna divide that, I'm gonna divide 1.25 by that answer. 
like I said, on my calculator, I'm not doing any rounding, so it might be slightly different. I'm getting the square root of n equals 10.281. Then I'm going to square both sides of this equation to get rid of the square root. So I'll square that. So that's giving me, on my calculator, I'm getting 105.7. Now here you do not want to use the rounding rules because if I go with 105, that's not going to be a big enough sample. So what we'll do is we'll just always round up when we do these sample size calculations. So to be within, to be within um, 0.2 hours of the true mean, I need to draw a sample of 106 people at the 90% level of confidence. Okay, so now what is Dr. Stevens? How did Dr. Stevens get that, get that, um, get that, get that answer, get that formula here? Here we are. How did he how did he come up with this formula? Well, if you take, if you think about what I just did, so I have I had that margin of error, that 0.2 equals the 1.645 times the 1.25 over the square root of n, square root of n. So we did I divided by the z score. Equals the standard deviation over the square root of n. And then what I did is I multiplied, I did the cross products. So uh, the margin of error times the square root of n equals the standard deviation times the z-score. Then I'm gonna divide by the margin of error. Granted, we had numbers, so we could keep it a little, you know, a little more succinct. But I hope you're seeing where that formula is starting to come from. And then if we square both sides, and that's what we did at the end, we squared that, that 10 point something number, that's where he's getting that formula. So all we really need to do is substitute those the numbers in the problem into this formula, and we don't have to do all that algebra because the algebra isn't done for us. So let's, with that in mind, let's come back to that problem set problem. And let's see, can I do some erasing here to give myself, give some, myself some room? Yeah. Okay, actually, why don't I erase up here too? Maybe I'll. Okay, so that's the formula we want. And I would drag it up if I could, but it won't let me. So we'll just leave it right there. So for part part B, E, they're saying, I want to be 90% confident that the sample mean is within 0.1 hours. So the, they just changed the margin of error. So let's think about the formula. So I'm going to take the standard deviation of 1.25 times, times the Z score, which is 1.645 to be 90% confident, right? 1.645, 1.645 over the margin of error. In this case, our margin of error is 0.1. Now square that answer. So on my calculator, I'm gonna do 1.25 times 1.645 divided by 0.1. That gave me 20, that gave me, let's see, 20.56 or so. And then I got to square that. I'll apply it myself. So I'm that's giving me on my calculator 422.8, which I got to round up to 423. Notice how that, you know, that sample to cut our margin of error in half, we had to get four times the sample size. That's because of the square root that's going on. The square root of four is two, right? So it had to cut it and they had to square it. It's going to double that value. All right, what happens if they change our level of confidence? We're back to 1.1, so what's gonna change is, is our z-score. Let me come down here to get a pen. Let's go down 99%. Let's go to the normal curve table that he gave us. And we'll look at that little mini table. For a 99% level of confidence, we're gonna use 2.57 as the z-score. So I'm gonna come back here, and everything else is the same, except we're gonna change this. We're gonna change this to 2.57, so that becomes, uh, let's see, 2.575, is it? 5.75, and it's within one standard, D, uh, within 1.1, right? Wasn't that the, yeah, we want to be within 0.1. So it's the same calculation, just the different values. Um, and I won't bother calculating this, because you know, because this is a starred, Start exercise, you have the, the answers in the back of the book. But this is the setup for it. 
where you're dealing with sample means.